Hello everyone and welcome to another video in our series of quick snapshots on using the new and also some of our all-time favourite features in the newest version of the Husqvarna Viking and FAF MySoNet embroidery software. In this video today we will be using the Platinum version of the software and we're going to be using the Stitch Editor module and we're going to learn about cropping, morphing and applique. Okay, so let's get started. So now we're in our welcome screen, we're going to select a blank canvas. We're going to change the hoop size to the 360 by 200 hoop in a natural orientation. Now the design we're using um, for this particular lesson we will um, have as a download file for you with the lesson notes as well. So we're going to go to insert and we're going to find our file which is des108 underscore 05 dot hus. So it's an oldie but a goodie. So we've now got our design so we'll open it and here we have our series of flowers. So we only want to use one of the flowers and we want to turn it into an applique design. But we're going to also play around with our morphing feature as well. So we're going to now come to our edit design icon up here, which will link us straight into the stitch editor module. So this is one of the fantastic new features with the MySoNet embroidery is that you no longer have to cut, copy and paste between the modules. You can actually integrate straight from one module to the other. So as you can see, we're now in the stitch editor module. So what we're going to do now is just isolate the flower that we want. So I'm going to come over here to the design panel and I'm going to deselect color number three to hide that color. And then I'm going to come over to our select section and select all visible. And then I'm going to delete the flowers that I don't require. Then I'm going to come back down into the bottom right hand corner of the screen and click on draw all stitches and now there's our one single flower. I'm now going to select that flower so select all visible and you can now see that the selection box is actually bigger than the physical design and that means that there's a little stitch running from here to there and you can just see the outline of it there. So it's much easier to see if we do have a rogue stitch by going into your view tab and going from 3D mode into 2D with stitch points. So now you can see, because when we go into 2D mode, it will actually show jump stitches. So now that we've found our little rogue stitch, we're going to come back to our home tab. We're going to click on box select and we're just going to draw a box around that center stitch there and it's one stitch and then we're going to delete it and it's gone as quickly as that. So now we're going to center the design in the hoop and we'll change the hoop now back to our 200 by 200 square hoop. So we're going to put ourselves back into 3D mode so we go to the view tab and we click on 3D and now we can see our flower. So what we're going to do now is have a play with morphing. We've had morphing in our software for quite some versions, um, but it's been very underutilized. So we're going to give you a little bit of refresher on what morphing does. So we get to morphing by clicking on the modify tab. And then over here we have the morphing section. We're going to play with global morphing today. So with global morphing, we have a series of different effects. So let's just have a quick look at the different effects. So we'll start with pinch. So if I click on the little bar here and drag it up and then I release it, you'll see a preview of what the pinch is going to look like. So yes, it might be what you would like in a design, but not really doing it for me at this moment. So let's try one of the other ones. We're going to come back to ripple, so we'll leave that one to last. So we're going to skew horizontally. So you can skew it to the left. So this gives you like a 3D plane of it. So you can see it moving. Then you also have 
view skew vertically so again now it's going to view in the opposite direction so it's pivoting top to bottom then we have sphere eyes so now we can create the design so we can um, make it so it looks as though it becomes a ball and the middle pops out of the design so that's your sphere eyes then we have twirl and we can twirl to the left or we can twirl to the right so we can create all sorts of wonderful different shapes by twirling it so again you can create lots of different effects from just one design okay now let's have a look at wave so with wave you've got two settings here you've got the height of the wave how deep the wave is going to be and then how often the wave happens so I love it that you can see a live preview as you change the settings here so you've got wave horizontal and again you've got wave vertical so let's go the other direction so we'll wave it that way and now we'll put in the frequency so you can choose what you'd like so in today's exercise we're actually going to use the ripple effect so we're going to select ripple and we're going to ripple height again this has got two settings and we're going to take this up until about 80 and then we're going to change the frequency to about 50 so you can see that we're twisting the design that's a bit too much so I'm going to bring it back to about 50 so there's my design that I'm happy with so once I've done that I'm now going to click OK and now you'll see the change of your design so what we're going to do now is we're going to add the applique to this design so we're going to first of all put it into 2d mode so it's easier to see my stitch points so I'm going to come up to view and I'm going to go 2d view with stitch points so now I'll be able to see where the stitch points are and you'll see that shortly when I zoom in so now we're going to select the border tab and in our stitch type section here I'm going to make sure that I've got running stitch selected okay and this is the best option to use when you already have your satin stitch or your covering stitch within the design for, to start with otherwise you can have satin stitch which will put a satin stitch covering over the um, underlying applique stitches you could have a motif line or you could have a triple stitch but we'll stick with running stitch today now we're going to come into the applique section and we're going to go add applique and then that is now highlighted and then we're going to select our fabric so when our fabric selection box comes up we're going to change it into um, fabric and that highlights our fabric options button then I'm going to click on load previously saved fabric and you can see there's a number of different categories already built in but under the, if you click on the little plus side beside general there's a whole lot more to choose from so today I'm going to click choose climate and then I'm just going to scroll down until I find my stars and moon which is here and then I'm going to choose say my um, color number 13 which is a purpley color and click OK and now I see a preview of the fabric in the screen here so here I'll click OK once I've done that I'm now going to select the options button in the applique section we're going to leave it as standard applique so it gives you a description down here of what the different settings are so if you go pre-cut piece then it will tell you what it's actually going to do there pre-placed and cut out so we're going to stay with our standard applique we're going to leave our running stitch and double stitch both at two millimeters we're going to have our applique piece margin at zero so make sure you change yours back to zero and we're going to put the tick in match placement line and then click OK 
So what we're going to do now is come over back to the left hand side where it says borderline, click on borderline and then select point line. So once we've selected point line, we get our little arrow with our little circle beside it. It's best now if you zoom in around the edges of the design so it's much easier to see. And I'm going to start placing my nodes here. Now with the placement of this stitching, because um, of the way the standard applique works with the match placement line, I'm actually going to place my nodes around the outside edge of the stitching. Okay, so I'm going to hold my shift key down and left mouse click here to give me a sharp line and then I'm going to place a series of left mouse clicks without the shift key to create the curve. And then when I come back to this sharp point here or this corner, I'll hold the shift key down and click and then I'll continue on around the design. Now, just remember that these nodes must be kept in strict numerical order. If you get one out of place or put one in the wrong spot, just continue on because you can always come back and readjust them if they're not sitting. So I don't want them actually sitting on the stitches. I want them sitting just outside. So you may just have to smooth your lines a little bit by just readjusting the nodes. So I'm going to continue on around the design now and then I'll meet you back at the end. Now you'll notice that I only put about three to four or four or five um, curve per um, arc because the least amount of uh, nodes you have the smoother your curve will be in the end. So now I'm just going to make sure that none of my little um, nodes are overlapping the line and I don't want the red line too far off the stitching either. So you're just going to now make some small adjustments to your nodes to smooth out those lines. So just take a bit of time here in getting them nice and smooth and also that they're not touching the stitching. Once we have finished placing all our nodes and adjusting them, we're then going to come up to create an external border. So click on there and now it's created the stitching through there and you can also see that it's added the blue stitching here at the start and at the end of the design. So once we've done that we're now going to go back. You can see that there's no fabric showing so let me just go zoom to fit so you can see the full design but the fabric hasn't appeared and the reason the fabric hasn't appeared is that I am in 2D mode so we're going to go back to the view tab and click on 3D and now you'll see the fabric under the design. Now you'll also notice that some of my fabric is now hanging outside of the applique or the satin stitching. So this is not a problem, we can fix that quite easily. So first of all, if we go through the design using our draw next color blocks, we can see that our first color is the applique and putting down the fabric and then we have our actual design and then last of all we have another outline of stitching which is not really necessary for this particular design. So what we're going to do is now that we've got our third color selected which is showing here with the tick in it, also here on the screen, we'll go back to the home tab, we'll select all visible and we'll delete it. Then we come back down into the bottom right hand corner and click on draw all stitches and the whole design will come back. So now what we're going to do is we're just going to draw next color block again. So we see just our blue stitching on the screen with the piece of applique fabric. 
We're then going to come in and we're going to select all visible. Now we're going to come into the tool section and select modify block. This is where I'm actually now going to reduce the size of the applique stitching so that we'll sit neatly under the satin stitching of the flower. So I'm going to reduce mine say to about 97% which is only a small amount and then I'm going to apply and then close. And then when I draw all stitches again and I come and click outside to deselect it, now I hopefully will not see any fabric hanging outside of the design and the raw edges of the fabric will be covered by the satin stitch. So now that now we want to see how it's going to stitch out. So I'm now going to come up to the design player and I'm going to I can make the screen a bit bigger so it's easier to see. So remember clicking down in the bottom right hand corner will expand the screen and then I'm going to click play and then I might just make it a little bit faster. Okay so now you can see it's now putting down the um, tap what we call the marking stitch so I can see where I need to place my fabric in the design. And remember it's in Stitch Editor that allows us to place the applique stitching required. So there it's telling me to stop to place fabric. Whereas the applique in the embroidery section only allows me to put a piece of fabric behind the design just to see what it would look like. So it's for visual reference only. So this is the power of what Stitch Editor can do. So now it's putting down the tacking stitches to hold the double running stitch and now it says that I need to stop to cut the applique. I'll just make it go a little bit faster while it does the stitching of the flower itself. Is our design completed. So again we just click cancel. So now we're happy with the stitch out of the design all we need to do is quick link back to our embroidery module. So just go down to your taskbar in the bottom and click on the embroidery module and then once you're back in the embroidery screen you just need to click finish for editing the background and your design will be there ready to save as a VP4 file for editing purposes and also then to export out as a machine format for your particular machine. I hope you've enjoyed this lesson and we will see you again hopefully soon and thank you and have a lovely day. Goodbye.